Right, okay, so let's recap a little bit and uh, uh, have a look at what we learned yesterday. So we defined mapping class groups and we saw that um, there are some special elements called Dane twists and then there's some other, uh, in general, an element of a mapping class group is more complicated and there was this uh, picture that uh, in general, um, a mapping class will fix some, and I said it can be canonically defined um, multi-curve. This is an example. And, um, and then on the complement up to taking powers, the uh, mapping class will act as a pseudo and also on each component. So on each component, the mapping class will act either as a pseudo nosov or as the identity. So that's what we learned yesterday. Um, but <clears throat> so um, going back to Dane Twist, um, so associated to each homotopy class of simple closed curves on the surface, Um, we associated uh, an element of a mapping class group which we uh, denoted as T alpha, the Dane twist about alpha, and this reveals a beautiful and strong interplay between um, the algebraic structure of the mapping class group and the topology at the level of the surface. So this relation between elements of a mapping class group and simple closed curves on the surface. And what we're going to do today is we're going to exploit this relation to learn a lot of, uh, well, maybe not a lot, but some, um, some things about the mapping class group. So let's further exploit this relation between uh, Dane twists and simple closed curves and learn about some uh, relations. So relations in the mapping class group. <clears throat> relations between Dane twists, uh, yeah. I shouldn't have written this. I should have written um, between twi uh, among twists. Uh, and the first one is kind of uh, stupid, is that uh, I have, so if I, if I know that two powers of Dane twists are equal, then this happens if and only if n is equal to m and uh, alpha is equal to beta, okay? That's obvious. Um, furthermore, um, two elements, two uh, map, uh, Dane twists commute if and only if um, the curves don't intersect. And remember, this means that this is the minimum. So the, the curves can be realized by, by uh, representatives which don't intersect on the surface. OK, that's kind of obvious too. And the third one is uh, <clears throat> quite uh, intuitive also. Um, so if I give you some mapping class, and I want to understand some simple closed curve, so I'm not going to write uh, simple closed anymore. I'm just going to write curve. That means a homotopy class of a simple closed curve on the surface. Then how do I, um, how do I understand the Dane twist about the image of alpha under F? So what do I do? I do uh, F minus 1 to bring it to alpha. Then I do the Dane twist about alpha, and then I do F. OK? Uh, this is really important, okay? This uh, because um, corollary, which I'm going to use later, is that uh, so think about this. So if alpha, so if I have two curves, are non-separating, meaning that the complements are connected.
So classification of surfaces, so the complements are homeomorphic. So classification of surfaces tells me that there's a homeomorphism of the surface taking alpha to beta, right? Uh, and this formula here tells me that uh, the Dane twists um, are conjugate. That's important. Um, and then um, maybe, um, so this is a relation uh, that people oh, who know about braid groups uh, will have seen. So uh, this is called the braid relation. Which um, yeah, um, says the following. So imagine I have two Dane twists which satisfy this relation. Okay, uh, this happens if and only if the curves intersect once. Um, so, and why is this true? Uh, so, maybe this is too low for an idea. Uh, um, right, so this, this equation here says T alpha, T beta, and then T alpha, and then T beta minus one, T alpha minus one, equals t beta, right? And this says, um, so this is the same thing. And then this says, um, so using this, um, this is the same thing as saying that t, uh, t alpha, t beta of alpha, so I take this as f. Uh, this is equal to t beta. And this thing here tells me that um, um, t alpha t beta of alpha equals t beta. Okay, and now you can check. Yeah, yeah. And then you check that this happens, that this is indeed the case if the curves intersect once. And how do you prove this? Well, up to homeomorphism of the surface, so for the other direction, you have to work a bit more. But how do you, how, ah, yeah, there's no statement here. Uh, up to homeomorphism, there's only one pair of curves that intersect once on the surface. So you draw your favorite part, uh, pair of curves that intersect once on your surface, and you draw a picture and you prove it's true. That's how you prove it, okay? What? What? I know, you have to work a bit more, but, uh, uh, but it's true, okay? Um, so you see, I mean, this highlights this interaction between algebra in the mapping class group and uh, combinatorics of simple closed curves. Uh, there's another relation which uh, is very important and I'm going to use a lot in a second. Uh, which is called the lantern relation. Which says the following. So this is uh, in the mapping class group of a sphere with four boundary components. Okay, so here's the relation. So I have a sphere with four boundary components. Um, This component here is called A, 
this is B, this is C, and this is D. And now I have three curves that separate two boundary components from the others. So here's one, this is called X, uh, this is called uh, Y, and this is called Z. And the relation says um, T A T B T C T D is equal to T X T Y T Z. Okay, so again, this is something you check. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, okay, so maybe maybe now it's a good time to say that. A lot of the things I'm saying, most of the things I'm saying, you can find, and many more, you can say on a book by, by Farb and Margali on mapping class groups, if you want to further read um, this, right? So this is very important. This I'm going to use in a second. Um, well, not in a second, but in a while. Um, right. Notice that these I can write in any order because they commute, but not these. Okay, so so something that some of you may have heard about is that uh, Dane twists, apart from you know their simple description as mapping classes, are important because they generate the mapping class group. Okay, so. I want to prove that. I want to give an idea of how to prove that. This is something that, um, opa. theorem, I guess I should say Dane and licorice. Um, so I'm going to prove something weaker than you know what some of you may have um, heard about. So but it, it's what I'm going to need for the rest, is that um, for every um, g at least 1, uh, the pure mapping class group of SGN, so no boundary components, is generated by twists along non-separating curves. OK, so before I give you an indication of uh, how to prove this, um, let, me, let me make some remarks. Uh, so it's no accident that here I wrote the pure mapping class group. So um, if you want to generate uh, the mapping class group, um, this statement is not true because uh, these don't permute punctures. Uh, so you need uh, also uh, half twists. Um, so which are, so you have a disk, cutting, uh, cutting a disk with two punctures and you interchange the punctures, you rotate, right? Uh, so, like that, okay? Um, um, and if you have boundary, uh, then also need uh, twists about boundary components. And okay, um, and three, it's true, although I'm not going to prove it true. Uh, so finitely many finitely many such twists 
um, suffice. But you need to work more than I'm going to do. So for instance, um, if you have maybe, um, there are concrete sets of uh, generators, uh, Dame Twist generators for the mapping class group. So it's a theorem of Humphreys um, that the Dane twist about this collection of curves, so, so you need, there is some chain here, and then you have these generate. These are called the Humphreys generators of the mapping class group. Okay, so this generate. This is the theorem of Humphreys. Okay, so but let me let me prove let me prove this state. Well, let me give you an idea of how to prove this statement because the techniques that come into play are, are more interesting perhaps than the result. Well, okay, the result is interesting, but the, the techniques are equally interesting. So idea of the proof. It's by induction, okay? Uh, okay, so there are two types. There's induction on number of punctures and induction on genus. And I'm going to explain to you uh, how this works. So, <coughs> um, so, Induction on n uh, there is a homomorphism um, so maybe um, let me let me write this so this is a surface maybe it has many marked points but uh, I single out one of them, which I call star, okay? This is, there may be more marked points, but I, I single out this one. And then there's a homomorphism. Um, to the surface where I forget that that point is marked, okay? Uh, and this homomorphism is surjective because if I have a homomorphism, a homeomorphism that doesn't fix this base point, I can homotop it so that it does. Okay, so here the marked point gets uh, sent somewhere else. So here's the marked point, and then you know I don't have to fix it with this group here. So it goes somewhere else. This is the image, so I can homotop it back so that it fixes it. Okay, by doing so, I've traced a loop. Uh, on the surface from this point to itself, okay? So uh, there's um, uh, Behrman, so theorem. Um, okay, so what Behrman proved is that the kernel of this is exactly uh, pi one of S based at that mic point. So she proved that uh, this sequence is exact. OK? Uh, that's called the Behrman short exact sequence for obvious reasons. She didn't call it that. But yeah. Um, right. Um, OK. Uh, yeah. And. Um, Yeah, so, so fact, um, so if alpha is uh, in pi 1 is simple, it's a simple loop, then um, what is the image 
of this loop understood as a mapping class. So here's, here's your loop alpha. So what you do is you take a neighborhood of this curve, like this, and the two boundaries of the neighborhood of this curve. So let's call this alpha minus and this alpha plus. Um, so let me, uh, let me call this homomorphism, homomorphism P. So this is called the push homomorphism. So P of alpha is alpha, uh, maybe not superscripts, but uh, lower scripts, subscripts. Uh, this is alpha minus dame twist of alpha uh, minus dame twist of alpha plus minus one. Okay, so notice that this mapping class here is not trivial there, but when I fill in the puncture, this goes to the identity, right? So this mapping class here is non-trivial here, but it's trivial there, okay? Um, Hmm. Um. <coughs> right. So, so now I've proved it for, so we have a, uh, we can prove the result using this. We can prove the result for P mod um, S1N. For in that case, the base case P mod uh, of the once punctured torus being uh, for the same proof I gave yesterday, this is SL2Z. which remember was generated by two Dane twists about non-separating curves. And an observation is that the fundamental group is generated by loops, non-separating loops, right? So using this sequence, uh, we prove it for all these surfaces, okay? So now the problem, um, um, yeah, uh, now the problem is that uh, maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe I, I make a note here. So note, the same reasoning, same argument shows uh, that P mod of a sphere with n boundary components is generated by twists. Okay. Yeah. You sure? Nothing. Yeah, they're both SL2Z. Um, so in this case, I, I'm, I, I'm not saying non-separating because there are no non-separating curves on the sphere. Yes. Yeah, yeah, punctures. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so here the base case is the mapping class group, the pure mapping class group of a sphere with three boundary, uh, three punctures. Thank you. Uh, which was trivial. Okay, um, so right. So now we can induct. So we can we can uh, apply this Behrman exact sequence to decrease the number of punctures. And now the problem is that you know we have to induct on genus. Okay, so um, so this was maybe one and two uh, induction on genus. Uh, 
Um, right, so, so what do I have to do? So let f be some mapping class. Here I'm implicitly assuming that g is at least 2. And um, I want to write it as a product of twists uh, about non-separating curves. Well, the first thing uh, is that, OK, so I choose, I choose some non-separating curve. OK. Um, If I, so I could be very lucky. Sometimes one is very lucky. Uh, um, if f of alpha equals alpha, then my f is actually supported on the complement of alpha, which is a surface of one genus less. And in that case, I can apply induction and write it as a product of non-separated and then twist. OK? So. Um, and let me not, I want to keep that board, so let me carry on here. Um, Uh, well, I remove it. I not not a not a. I mean, I just remove the curve. Who asked? Oh, <laughs> two punctures. Yeah, two punctures. So we could be very lucky, but most of the time we are not very lucky. Uh, we could be somewhat lucky. Um, uh, let me see. Also, if we were so lucky that uh, the intersection number of alpha with f of alpha were equal to 1, uh, then we would be done also. Why? Um, that's a good question. Let's see what I wrote here. <laughs> ah, uh, uh, what did I write? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, here, here. In this case, um, T of alpha then twist about alpha, and then then twist about f of alpha of alpha um, equals f of alpha. Um, hmm. Is that what I want to write? Yes. Uh, yeah, but now I'm a bit confused because I don't see. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, um, so now the problem is that, you know, we could be even less lucky. And I mean, this, these two things, you know, need not hold at all. Um, uh, so in general, what we need is to know that given that there exists a sequence um, Starting with alpha, this is beta zero, beta zero, uh, beta one, 
beta n ending with f of alpha such that the intersection number of bj with bj plus 1 equals 1. And uh, so this is some topological argument, but it's true. So this, this happens. This is true. Uh, right, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. So in the, in the SL2Z case, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a bit confused about that, actually. Uh, so... Um, yeah, there's something I'm not seeing here. Um, why I'm done there. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I apply these two twists, and, uh, and uh, F fixes uh, um, alpha, right? Yeah, so if there is a fixed curve, if there is a fixed curve, uh, then I'm done. No, no, that's fixed. Yeah, I know. If there is a fixed curve, then I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and then, so here, so okay, alpha, uh, when I do um, this times the inverse of this twist, fixes alpha. Uh, yeah. I mean, this element takes alpha to this curve, so the inverse of this element takes this curve to this curve. Yeah. So now f times the inverse of this element fixes alpha. Okay. Right. Oh God. OK? So I mean, there's some topological argument that I'm not showing you, but it's not very difficult. So this, this thing that we can approximate, um, that we can uh, find sequences of uh, finite sequence of curves between any two non-separating curves so that any two consecutive ones intersect only once. So modulo this black box, I'm done, OK? OK? Um, right. Um, OK. Uh, yeah, the problem with these two boards is that, you know, <laughs> I never want to lower the, uh, that one because I don't want to hide this. But anyway, let's do it. Um, Um, okay, so now we know that the mapping class group is generated by Dane twists about non-separating curves. So, so uh, the mapping class group is the same generator? Yeah, yeah. So I said, uh, working more, you can find, you can prove that only finitely many non-separating Dane twists suffice. I, I erased it, <laughs> but I showed a picture of which one suffice. Do you like that board? Yeah. <laughs> you have to work more, but I don't need it now. So I don't need to. Know, I don't know. I don't need that extra information that 
it's a finally generated group. It is a finally generated group. It is a finally presented group. Okay? All right? No, it's not very hard. So what you need to show, what you need to show is that the mapping class group acts on a complex, which is simply connected, and the action is nice. So you construct a complex. Some people did, Hatcher and Thurston. There's some complex that it's simply connected. And the mapping class group acts with compact quotient. And you understand the stabilizers of vertices and of edges. And from that, you can actually read off a presentation. So, but you need to work more. And I don't need it now. Um, I'm just collecting chalk. Um, right. So <coughs> I want to prove. Uh, given the, uh, with this information that we have to hand now, I want to prove um, some uh, very important algebraic result about the mapping class group. So uh, it's a theorem of Powell from 1969, building up on work of John Berman and Mumford. Is that uh, if the genus so if the genus of the surface is at least 3, uh, then um, uh, P mod SGN is perfect. So meaning um, the abelianization is trivial. I want to prove that statement because they prove. OK, let me get that in a second. Uh, it's not true, but almost true. Uh, uh, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say this in a second. Um, so prove <coughs> um, So let's take the quotient map, P mod SGN down to the abelianization, let me not write what the surface is. It takes too long. The quotient map, OK, Q. Um, OK, so let me not write out the details. We know this group is generated by non-separating Dane twists. And they are all conjugate in the mapping class group in the pure mapping class group, OK? And this is an abelian group. So this means that the image of this group is, abelian, is cyclic. They all go to the same element, yeah? So it's generated. So any two Dane twists about non-separating curves, they have the same image because they conjugate. And this group is generated by Dane twists about non-separating curves. So the image is cyclic. Um, so non-separation uh, generation by non-sep twists plus uh, um, uh, non-sep twists non-separating twists being conjugate. These two things together imply that um, um, Q of P mod is cyclic, generated by some element uh, C for cyclic. Uh, OK? <clears throat> and now the point is, so I, I haven't used this. Um, but now I am going to use it. And the point is that um, if the genus is at least 3, I can draw a lantern on my surface using only non-separating curves. Um,
Okay, so how? Uh, like this. So here's a four whole sphere. Okay, and because the genus is at least three, so I can do this. So here's the surface of genus three. And if you want more genus, then you add whatever here, you know. And here are the four curves that uh, appear in the lantern. A, B, C, D. And then the three others are these ones. And then the, the other one is a bit more difficult to see. So it goes around here, goes down, and then goes up like that. But you can check. I mean, you, you draw, you know, you convince yourself that it's not, uh, none of them are non-separating. And now... Uh, you use the fact that 4 is not equal to 3 uh, to conclude that uh, because of the lantern relation, we have C4 equals C3, so C is the identity. All right? So 4 is not equal to 3 is an important thing to remember. Yeah? Uh, uh, right. This thing is, uh, this result is very important. Uh, so exercise. <coughs> Prove the same thing. For surfaces with boundary. So this time, I mean, it's the same proof. You just need to distinguish the case. So the, in this case, it's generated by twists along non-separating curves and about boundary components. So you, you know by this that all the separating then twists that they have to map trivially. And now you just need to draw lanterns using one boundary component and the six other curves being non-separating. And this will tell you that then twists about boundary components will map trivially to homology also. <clears throat> okay. Um, so this is beautiful. I mean, you know, you're getting, you're getting algebraic, you know, algebraic statements about mapping class group and, you know, they boil down to topological facts, combinatorics of simple closed curves. Okay, um, right. Wow. So I have 15 minutes left, is that right? Who's chair? Okay, even better. Uh, right. So what's after this? Okay, um, whatever. So I want to, yeah, I want to mention I don't know how much of this I'm going to prove, but uh, I'm going to prove I'm going to um, discuss a classical result by Ivanov um, that says so. The goal is to prove so. The goal is to prove a theorem of Ivanov. Uh, do you know when? From the 90s or something, I don't know. The 80s or 90s or something, I don't know. Uh, that, ah, I didn't answer your question uh, about genus 2. Uh, in genus 2, this result is not true. In genus 2, the abelianization is Z modulo 10. That's a theorem of Mumford. And in genus 1, using the fact that the mapping class group is SL2Z, is Z modulo 12. And uh, for genus 0, uh, it's highly non-true. So the pure mapping class group of a sphere, a punctured sphere, subjects onto a free group. But yeah, maybe, yeah, I shouldn't get into that. I don't know. Um, 
I can explain that later if you want to, whoever wants. So the goal is to prove um, uh, this. So the automorphism group of the mapping class group Um, okay, so actually I'm not going to prove that. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, is the extended mapping class group. Okay, there are some surfaces for which this is not exactly true. Uh, but what is always true is that, um, so, except... Where there's kernel. Uh, so, but what is true is that uh, there's, yeah, there's a homomorphism given by conjugation, and that this homomorphism is surjective. Okay, so it's always surjective. But sometimes there is kernel, but most of the time there isn't, okay? Um, and it's understood where there is kernel. Um, all right. So how do you prove this? Um, Well, again, we're going to use, we're going to transform this algebraic statement about the automorphism group um, of your surface, of the mapping class group of your surface, into a statement about simple closed curves on the surface. Okay? Um, so first of all, there's a, there's a theorem. Um, so there's a theorem which... Initially, I wanted to prove, but I, I, I'm not sure I, I have the time. A, th a great theorem of Brighton uh, <coughs> that says that um, if uh, the genus is at least three, um, and um, then every homomorphism, it doesn't have to be an automorphism, it doesn't have to be injected, just any homomorphism uh, from um, the pure mapping class group, so this is genus of S. Into some other mapping class group sends den twists to den twists. Okay, this is not true. Okay, it's not true. Because, for instance, the homomorphism could be trivial. Okay, so, and then it's not true in this case. But what is true is that uh, sends uh, den twists to uh, roots of powers of multi-twists. So what's a root? That's, so it's very annoying that Dane twists have roots. Okay? Uh, and in this definition, I'm implicitly assuming that, you know, the, okay, a multi-twist is a product of Dane twists about uh, these joint simple closed curves. Okay? But I'm allowing the, the multi-curve to be empty. So for instance, you know, a finite order element fits in this, uh, in this phrase here, okay? Finite order element is, all, is a root of a power of a multi-twist about uh, the trivial multi-curve. What? Uh, no. I don't think so. Say that again? Like, like, 
uh, it's by definition. It's my definition. OK, so uh, it's a root of the identity. OK, why are you worried about closed? Chris? Um, no. No, we constructed, yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting, yeah. So, so this Brighton's theorem says the twist is kind of preserved. What Chris is referring to is that uh, us two with Juan Soto, we proved that the type of being pseudonosov is not preserved even by injective homomorphisms. There are injective homomorphisms that send pseudonosovs to multi twists. Yeah. Yeah? Did anybody say anything? No? Did anybody say anything? No. <laughs> All right. Um, OK. So maybe I want to, um, maybe I want to, uh, I want to give a, a, some idea of a hand, hand wavy idea of how to prove this. Because the heart of the argument is the fact that I just erased that uh, the mapping class group is perfect. OK? So let me, let me give an idea of um, how to prove this result. This is not how Ivanov uh, argued. So here, we have more information than this. Here, what we have is an, uh, an automorphism. What Ivanov did was to uh, say that um, a Dane twist, so an, a mapping class is a Dane twist, if and only if, OK, there's some other technical condition, but essentially, if and only if the center of the centralizer uh, is cyclic. Okay. So, and that property is preserved by automorphisms, but it's not preserved if you want to study more general uh, uh, homomorphisms. You know, between, for instance, say, uh, just say injective homomorphisms or homomorphisms between different uh, mapping class groups. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a much stronger. Uh, uh, theorem, okay? So armed with this theorem, if on top of that you know that the homomorphism is an automorphism, then it's very easy to deduce that actually Dane twists have to map to Dane twists. Okay? Just they have to have infinite order. They cannot, have, they cannot be a multi-twist because, you know, there's no room. There has to be, you know, the multi-twist has to be supported on one single curve. And, you know, if you started with, say, a non-separating curve, then this curve has to be non-separating because, for instance, of the braid relation. So but the braid relation, you know, relates, rela you know, this T alpha, T beta, T alpha equals the other, yeah, T alpha, T, T beta, T alpha, T beta with uh, intersection number being equal to one. That, that uh, yes. Of Ivanov? The center of the centralizer, it's like a riddle. It's like a riddle, like a... Um, Yeah, okay, so there's some other condition that, uh, yeah. What is the condition? Do, uh, it's, uh, yeah, the centralizer of a pseudonosov. Um, yeah, but the center of a pseudonosov is very different from the center of a Dane twist. So you can distinguish, you can use algebraic information to distinguish. The center of the centralizer is Z, but the, cent the centralizer of a Dane twist is very different from the centralizer of a pseudonosov. The centralizer of a Dane twist, exercise. What is the, center what is the centralizer of a Dane twist? 
So it's essentially the mapping class group of the complement surface. The centralizer of a pseudonosov is cyclic. OK, so the two things are, yeah. Uh, but what you should be worried about is how the center of the centralizer. Yes, I'm, I'm saying that, yes. I'm saying that there are, some, there are three conditions. One of them is that the center of the centralizer is cyclic. And the other one uh, is probably that the, um, that the centralizer is not cyclic. OK? OK? But what you should be worried about is what happens if a Dane twist. So what is the centralizer of, say, a mapping class that fixes one simple closed curve on the surface and acts as a pseudo-anosov on the complement? OK? So you should, you should work out what is the centralizer and what is the center of the centralizer there. And there it's not cyclic, OK? So it's, it's a good exercise. Um, OK, so how, how long do I have left? Five minutes. Five minutes, OK. OK. Um, so what's the idea? Um, very fast. What is the idea of the proof? Um, OK. Um, let's suppose, for the sake of argument, that the genus is at least 4, and that um, alpha is a non-separating curve, and that this homomorphism is called phi. OK, so here's my alpha. And I want to convince myself, I want to get an intuition about why uh, phi, of, phi of t alpha has to be uh, a root of a power of a multi-twist. OK? <clears throat> so imagine not. Imagine it isn't. So what does it mean that the image is not a root of a power of a multi-twist? Remember the normal form? It's not normal form. Uh, remember the uh, description? This, uh, the, so, okay, the, so the image is something, okay? And maybe it's reducible, maybe it fixes some curves. Um, actually, uh, up to taking a power here, I can assume that these, these curves are not permuted. So, um, I, I mean, the fact that this is not a root of a power of a multi-twist means that the image has a pseudo-anosov component. OK? So suppose phi of t alpha has a pseudo-anosov component. Let's call it y. And this lives in S prime. OK? It may not be connected. Uh, so let's take the maximal pseudo-anosov component, okay? the, the, maximal su the maximal surface subsurface of S prime on which the image is acting as a pseudo-anosov. It need not be connected, OK? But it's maximal, OK? So let's suppose for the, case of, for the sake of argument that it's connected, OK? <coughs> so remember from uh, Chris Leininger's lecture tomorrow, uh, <laughs> That uh, uh, pseudo-anosovs, they come equipped with uh, two foliations. And uh, the action of the pseudo-anosov is that you stretch in one direction and you contract in the other direction. OK? Right. OK. So very good. Um, so now. Um, OK, so this is the uh, lambda, uh, the laminations, or the foliations preserved by phi t alpha. Um, so now, um, the, cent the, the uh, centralizer 
of this phi of t alpha preserves y, right? Because it commutes with this uh, mapping class, it preserves y and the lamination, the foliation, okay? Um, And so what did we get? Uh, we got um, uh, we got an uh, a homomorphism. So we have a homomorphism from the mapping class group of um, God. Yeah, I changed my notation. Uh, this this the centralizer in P mod uh, S of T alpha uh, into um, the centralizer in mod S prime, P mod S prime of phi of T alpha. All right? Um, but this, this is more or less, um, well, this is more or less the mapping class group of S cut along alpha. Okay? So this mapping class, when I push it forward, phi, <coughs> what I'm seeing is that this mapping class group, the image, uh, is acting, you know, is preserving some foliation on y, and it's acting as preserve, uh, expanding in one direction and contracting in the other direction. But let's say expanding in one direction, OK? So this is telling you that you have a homomorphism to r, given by how much you expand along that foliation, OK? A non-trivial homomorphism to r. But the homology here is trivial, so you cannot have such thing. Okay, uh, there are no homomorphisms to R, so you cannot have a pseudo-Nosov component. Yeah, because if you did, you construct a homomorphism to R. This is not how Brighton proves it. Brighton proves it. Some, uh, I mean, it's equivalent, but uh, it uses the uh, action of the mapping class group on Teichmuller space with the veil peterson metric. But I don't know. So, so this does the job. And the same, I'll uh, take one minute to say, uh, this will interest you, uh, that the same argument, which I didn't say much about, but the same, the same proof will say to you that if you have a representation of the pure mapping class group into a linear group, GLNC, then the image of a Dane twist is a matrix whose eigenvalues are uh, roots of unity. Yeah, because otherwise you construct a homomorphism to R. Okay? And you're interested in uh, compact representations of mapping class groups into compactly groups. Uh, so that, yeah, tells you a few things about those. Um, so it tells you that Dane twists have to be in the kernel. Um, but anyway, yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'll prove the rest of the, uh, of the theorem of Ivanov. Now you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>